But our next piece is the ESG Fireside Chat, exploring your career and executive's journey leading ESG narratives. Now, you're going to be joined by Erica Murdoch, while Buena, who's the head of ESG at Robinhood. I love Robinhood. Um, so she does strategy and implementation. She's a global head of impact services um, before she was at Amazon Web Services. So she's got a huge history in the digital space. And Tegan Keel, who leads the climate and data and tech practice at KPMG. I can't wait to hear that that climateer reporting expert helping other people put that into their business. Welcome, both of you. Have a Thank great you, conversation. Hey, I wanted to know, what was a surprising thing that happened to you in your career? What surprised you? Something oh, boy. Um, I think first, well, for me personally, is actually how I got into ESG, which in a previous life, I led uh, KPMG's Blockchain Center of Excellence. So it sounds like two very different things, but they're actually kind of connected in a way, but just being able to sort of pivot and make that transition and sort of take it and run with it. See, it was, I'm, I'm still kind of floored by it. <laughs> That's fantastic. That was one of my questions was around sustainability and the EFT space. Hmm. Yeah. That's a later conversation to have. <laughs> but what about you, Erica? Um, I would say that I have a tech career in technology um, and I'm an English major. <laughs> so, oh, there you go. Um, and that I've loved it and uh, started off at TaskRabbit, then Twilio, then AWS and now Robinhood. So it's been a good ride so far. That's fantastic. Well, I can't wait to hear your fireside chat. So I'll turn it over to you. Thanks again. Absolutely. Awesome. And we're in good company, Erica, because I uh, have a political science degree, which is there we go. Never relevant, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Marvelous. Well, we, um, we're going to make this a bit of a conversation. So you're going to hear from both of us. Um, and to kick it off, I actually wanted to ask you, Tegan, if you could share with us um, a small decision that you made that ended up having a pretty big impact on your life. Yeah. So this is sort of my, my general career advice, but I don't know if it's necessarily a small decision, but it's one of the best things that I ever did, which was about a year after I joined KPMG. Um, I have, a, you know, obviously a background in leading sort of large scale technical developments. I was just kind of really burnt out and tired and I actually took a leave of absence and just kind of did like the hard reset in terms of thinking about what it was I was doing, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be, all of that. I mean, I hope you all don't get to that point of needing to like completely shut off for two months. But for me, it's one of the best things that I ever did because it definitely did sort of help me, you know, pivot. And that's how I got into blockchain and that's how I am where I am today. So all good things in retrospect. Marvelous. So um, I'm always curious, Erica, like how people, you know, I think you and I kind of have maybe unconventional backgrounds for being where we are. So I'm always curious for how people got where they are. Can you talk a little bit about your path? Because like Patty mentioned, you've got sort of a lot in your, in your quiver there. I, um, I do. I feel very fortunate. I'm actually doing the work I wanted to do since I graduated college, which not many people can say. Um, I graduated from Lehigh University in Pennsylvania, even though I'm a California girl, and um, <clears throat> recognized very early that, um, that I wanted to be a part of companies, one of the largest engines within capitalism. Um, and I wanted to help them be good kind of corporate citizens of the world. Um, I, I didn't do that exact thing for the first four years of my life. In fact, I remember the Salesforce Foundation had just launched um, and I was all ready to kind of show up and tell them I needed to work there, but I was not living in California at the time. Um, so I ended up doing some nonprofit consulting work for five years, four or five years, um, and then made my way into, into technology. But um, I, this, like this passion that I have for really helping a company understand what its role in, in kind of society is. And I think the thing that most excites me is when you can see the impact of the actual product. Um, so, you know, when I was at 
TaskRabbit, again, different from what I do now is actually doing community management, but the impact was within the group of people that ran the tasks. Um, you know, at Twilio, it was the power of watching the phone call or the text message that we sent um, be, be life-changing for a lot of people. Um, at AWS, kind of similar, you know, the power of number of those services, um, being able to, you know, spot animals for, you know, conservation efforts. Um, so kind of the list goes on and Robin and I'm now in a true ESG role working with um, our corporate governance team and focus on our overall company strategy. But yeah, I feel um, incredibly lucky to be in the place that I am. And it's been both hard work and, and fantastic timing, um, but it's been quite, quite a fun ride. Um, yeah, I love that. How about, and how about you? Yeah, well, like I sort of alluded to, I have sort of a background in data and analytics, which I'm still unclear how I ended up there from a little science degree, but we, you know, it is what it is. Um, and then, you know, I'm sort of a career consultant, um, which is a little bit funny because when I went into business school, I was like, la, 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 I'm not going to do anything with consulting whatsoever. And here I am and continue to be. Um, but yeah, I think what, you know, I took sort of employee number three at KPMG, figuring out our um, blockchain strategy. Um, and so we sort of, you know, dabbled around trying to figure out what was sort of most um, promising from a business perspective for KPMG in that space and landed on crypto and climate. Um, and so obviously I stuck with the climate side of things and that has, you know, we've sort of since flip flopped from leading with technology to leading more on the data side of things, but obviously technology is a huge part of where we advise our clients still. So I've been at it probably two years fully dedicated, which is not as long as you, Erica, but like in the ESG space is actually kind of veteran status. So I, I would completely say it is. And and actually, I'm I'm actually at a corporate governance conference right now, and one of the conversations um, that we're having is the the name of ESG is actually quite fascinating, right? When I started, it was a very nascent thing. I don't even I'm probably only a few people in the investment community use the term, and now it's this enormous term. People are still even trying to unpack it, but yet some people have been doing it for decades and their whole career. And actually, a number of the conversations here are that we actually maybe should think about calling it something else. <laughs> so um, so stay tuned for the next nomenclature evolution of ESG, um, which I presume involves some sort of sustainability, but it's there's all the such... spell though. <laughs> and that's the problem is that there's, otherwise you're in a word soup situation. So I have no idea what will happen, but um, it's, but it's, what's cool is what you said is, is to see that it's starting it's really a thought exercise, right? At the end of the day, it's about long-term identification of kind of risks and opportunities, and it's about building building sustainably. It is, um, you know, you thinking about it in an emergent technology with blockchain and crypto and everything, which um, is very needed given the energy that's used in that in that uh, business. Oh, I have a whole lot of thoughts on that, but I, don't know. I, know you do. I won't go into it. That's a, that's a separate fireside chat. Um, it is. So obviously we're, we're sort of like talking about technology, right? We're all here to sort of from a, from a, from that lens. So tell me, I know how I kind of look at it from a day-to-day -day basis, but you're sort of in industry. So how do you think about technology either in terms of reporting and or sort of shaping the direction of ESG. Yeah. Um, so I would say in my career, it's really, it's, I've been, um, I've, I've been in kind of the platform SaaS space. I've worked at two consumer companies and two B2B companies. Um, and all of them have been actually pretty different and, and different, um, well, AWS and Twilio were similar business models, but everything else, you know, it's been a variety across industries. Um, and, and again, that consistent theme for me and my values and, and what I get excited about is being able to see the core business function um, or, or some of the core business uh, functions or pillars be used as a mechanism for good or be able to create um, impact for good. And 
I, I wholeheartedly believe that if it is not sitting in um, a core part of the business um, and you're not having high level strategic conversations, you the effort will not be successful. It will be seen as a nice little side project that like someone is doing. I will say, I caveat that, I do think it's shifting. I should think it's shifted with COVID um, and the focus, um, especially with the SEC potential incoming regulation, focus on climate and human capital of the lot for the last couple of years. So I, I do think that it's, it's having more of a moment right now than ever before. Um, but the that impact has just been so powerful. And, and sometimes in my career, that was very easy kind of to see. Sometimes it's been more of a a conversation and proposal internally. Um, but you know, like for example, when I was at Twilio, we set that up. It's a it's a social enterprise with inside of the business. It's its own PL, it generates revenue. Um, and that's and you know, at AWS I sat within the compute business development team, which is like the heart of the services um, that they offer customers. So I think that that's really important to think about, both as folks are either evaluating a role, I think this is a good question to look for, where do these jobs sit within companies? Um, and also I think it's really important to ask yourself if that's important to you. Um, obviously on the peer kind of traditional ESG side, corporate strategy side, there's a lot of technology coming out right now, both around helping you do ESG disclosures and AI to track, um, to track sentiment and and data capture and all of these things. Um, there's there's an overwhelming amount actually, and there's a lot, especially coming out um, platforms around GHG emissions and things like that. Um, at the end of the day, you just need to know what's important for your business um, and what's important for you and be able to explain why you you chose that. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is, um, what's probably more, even more important to do before you go buy another technology, you know, use a te another technology service is that you understand your own data and its sources. Um, and data quality is just, it's part of the reason that all of this gets a little jumbled sometimes um, is because we have to be sure of our own data quality. So I think technology can is absolutely a tool for all of this. And in certain companies or instances, it's actually a direct mechanism to create positive change. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the data quality thing is key and there's just, there's so much for companies to be navigating right now. That there's there's just... an overwhelming <laughs> amount. <laughs> and especially if you are a company with a large supply chain or a real physical environmental risk, it is a lot to, yes. to cover. And hopefully you have a couple of people, more than a couple of people working on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but I, I also wanted to ask you, talk to us a little bit about um, kind of tech and cloud and IT and, and these ESG roles. You know, your, your perspective is from the outside and you get to work across industry. So what, what are you seeing? Those, how are you seeing those things working together in the market? Yeah, I mean, and I think it's really interesting because things are shifting so quickly. So even like two years ago when I started in sort of focusing entirely on the climate space, all the conversations were with sustainability teams, right? And then it sort of started maybe getting some of the CFO involved. And now mm -hmm. it's the sustainability teams plus the CFO, plus sometimes the risk officer. And now IT is becoming a, like a much bigger part of the conversation where they weren't kind of even in the picture, uh, I would say a few years ago. So I think, you know, you mentioned a lot of things, but, you know, obviously the data piece is key. And what is particularly challenging in the climate and ESG space is so much of that data is outside the sort of mm. purview of the organization compared yep. to sort of when we see other regulations coming in. And I've even had a bank tell me this, like, we're okay when there's a finan new financial regulation because we create the data, we manage it, we know where it is. I'll I don't know where that is for climate. Like I need my supplier data. I need stuff coming from like my utility providers. Like it's not sort of the normal course of enterprise data. And so there's all of that plus sort of this looming, um, you know, specter of disclosure. And it's even for clients that are having, that have reported and have kind of a 
decent process in place. They're kind of looking at it, at it wholesale new to say, how do we do this in a, no pun intended, but more sustainable way? And obviously cloud and IT has a big part of that, which is we're not doing anything that gives us a jump start, or we are doing it, but it's incredibly manual because we're sourcing data from all like these 900 places and trying to manage it in Excel sheets, which is, you know, the most advanced technology since <laughs> anything um, that most people- Where we all begin most, though. <laughs> that's what most people are using. Um, and so, so, you know, we're starting to see IT become a much bigger part of the question or, you know, equation, which is, what do we already have in house? How does it help streamline what we're doing or need to do? And then what does that mean in terms of other things that we need to buy? So, you know, I would say those conversations in terms of IT being sort of part of the question or even like technology being part of the discussion is pretty new in the last few months, but uh, very popular, keeping me very busy, which I appreciate, but um, there's a lot to do. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I, so let's yeah. talk. And so, I mean, I think you mentioned a few things. So we we're more obviously we we're talking about IT, but sort of curious from your perspective, Erica, like who else, and I probably answered maybe some of this, but like I know who kind of I talk to from a consulting perspective, but curious from your perspective from like inside an organization, how yeah. do you sort of disseminate those ESG messages or getting people to think through that lens because it did really used to be very sort of siloed within a sustainability group and those, those but now it's everybody's got to think through that lens. Yes, yes, indeed. Hopefully, the idea is that <laughs> right. Um, well, so I would say you know one thing is all of us uh, in these in a job that touches ES or G and and actually I I do want to say. I, I kind of feel like it should be GES because <laughs> governance is the operations. It's the foundation of the house and without sound governance, all the rest of it's pretty hard to build from a long-term sustainability perspective. Um, but, you know, one of the, we all get into these roles because in, we have some passion or our, it aligns with our personal values or a belief that we have about, you know, the world. And I, think one of the things that's really important is that you make sure that your personal beliefs don't outweigh um, your actions at work. And I say that because you have to remind yourself that you work at a company um, or you work for a specific client um, and your job is not to deliver um, your own thinking and methodology, it's to help them do that. And so what's been neat about each of the jobs and the companies that I've had is that every time each one of them has helped me actually unpack my own assumptions and my own passions and propose something in a new way or cause me to sit down and think about it from a 360 vantage point um, because I'm explaining it to new cross-functional partners every single time. Um, and like you said, we're usually the ones teaching people about all of this um, information, uh, you know, whether that's like hiring a consultant to train the board on ESG, or that's, um, or that's just us educating someone about an environmental policy or cl a climate goal. Um, that's, it's really important. So I would say one of the most important skills is actually relationship management and cross-functional engagement, um, being super organized, um, making sure that you are like working your chain of, um, working your chain of executives. So, you know, by the time you've gotten to your VP, like, all of um, that person's directs um, have already seen the proposal. Like you, that you are just making sure that you're working with all the key partners across um, across the company. In my role, again, as um, when you're in more of a traditional ESG role, corporate governance is an incredibly important partner. Um, and again, it you know depends on how you get into these jobs. People have had. Um, deep sustainability or environment experience. Um, some people have are coming from the investor world. Some people are coming from kind of the more social impact, like corporate world or even nonprofit world. So um, it really just depends on where your strength is and where you need to kind of fill those gaps. Um, and I, I think the last thing is really knowing what you're good at and what you need to hire out for. Because as we've talked about, this covers a lot of ground 
Um, you're also not going to be able to do everything, which is why a prioritization exercise is really important, um, which I can explain that later. And that's another talk. Um, but figuring that out and getting alignment from your internal stakeholders is really, really key. All uh, definitely valid points. I mean, I think the one about sort of recognizing, like separating personal and, you know, sort of your company's ethos is a big one. I think, you know, in a consulting space, it's been really interesting for me to see. I mean, I think there's a lot talked about, about sort of millennials and Gen Z and how sort of passionate they are about this. But there is a little bit of a flip side, you know, especially me as a consultant. We have, we serve all clients, right? And some of them are going to be the ones that are probably some of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions or other things. It doesn't mean that they're not committed to changing or doing things Correct. better, right? And so there's a little bit of like, you've got to leave that at the door and sort of if they're, you know, they're clearly coming to us because they're asking for help. So let's, you know, sort of come in with that in mind. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, what are your parting thoughts, Tegan, for someone who wants to get into a, this career with us? Oh, my parting thoughts are don't do what I did, which was sort of like <laughs> get really lucky in terms of timing, although clearly it worked out. You were clearly a little more intentional about it. Um, I think now the expectation is much higher, right, in terms of ESG knowledge. So it's like it's great if you're interested in it, but I think to your point in terms of knowing what you're good at, you know, first you have to do a little bit of work on, on your own to say, yep. here's what I know, here's what I understand, here's what I'm good at, and here's how I think I can apply it. You know, that's sort of the bare minimum expectation. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, there's also, I'd add, there's a ton of courses online right now. Berkeley has a class on ESG for executive, um, like actually I think any of any level. Um, I took a competent boards certificate class, um, which is more at the board and higher executive level, um, but that was fantastic. They offer two different classes, but I mean, if you just Googled ESG classes, you'd be able to find one. I would say awareness of ESG frameworks and disclosure process. If you are gonna be someone that's coming more early in your career, you're gonna have a more junior role, you gotta know that for sure. Um, and I, there's one question, Julie, you asked one question about success stories for tech companies of increased revenue. I actually also, uh, struggle to find case studies on this, but, um, I did a little bit of my own homework. Um, the day that Airbnb actually announced their, um, support of refugees, their stock jumped, if I recall correctly, cause this was about a year and a half ago, their stock jumped 10% um in one day so and then it like level it went back down but that was that has been to my i don't think anyone else did a case study on that but i just literally pulled up their stock and looked at the uh and and looked at yahoo finance and that's what happened that day so i'm sure there's going to be a lot more case studies and the um, shared value initiative is a great nonprofit organization that works with companies um but I, yes if i there could be a better library on these things yeah, my general answer to that is um, we need a, a little bit more historical data points before yeah. we really start. There's a lot of things that kind of draw correlations, but they're you know, kind of shaky and ESG performance in and of itself is a little bit tricky to measure and Correct. define anyway. So for everyone that said, like, you can find one agency that says somebody's really good, you can find another agency that says that same company is terrible. So you can kind of right now fit the narrative. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> I know we're over time, although I could do this like all day. But, Me too. Um, no, I'll just jump in to. and tell you how fantastic you've been. Because like I, I have so many notes about this, but you, if you read the chat, you'll see what people thought was really valuable. So be sure to go back in there. But really, I loved when you said you thought governance should be first, because shouldn't it? I mean, really, that makes sense. If you don't have that in place, nothing happens. And also this awareness of frameworks, really important to understand courses are out there on ESG um, and uh, how do we do it? And I love that people are coming back around the climate thing because we see that and it needs to happen. Yeah. I can't wait to hear more from you in the future. This was fantastic. Thank you, uh, Susan, you're the best. Thanks, thank Patty. You. Warm round of applause. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again out there later. <laughs>